So you're deciding to start Monster Hunter Rise, and you're watching this because you obviously want to be wearing the fanciest dinosaur pelt pants as soon as you possibly can. Or maybe you're just coming back in to gear up for the big Sunbreak expansion. Well, either way, I'm Alex, and I'm here to quickly ramp up your knowledge of the game so you can get to that cool stuff a bit faster. Breaking this all down by section, we have general gameplay tips, armor and skills, choosing a weapon, palicos and palamutes, perma buffers, and lastly, cooking. Now, let's just get this going. First up, here is a splattering of various gameplay tips that you'll really want to put to use. Depending on the weapon type, it's likely one of its silkbind attacks have segments of invulnerability during its animation. This will let you power straight through attacks or monster roars, letting you play much more aggressively. So figure out which of your silkbind attacks have that benefit, it may be some that you unlock later, and put it to use for negating oncoming damage. Next, some items can be thrown while in midair. This is especially good for the barrel bombs, that would normally need to be carefully set down and then armed. Just chucking them straight down onto monster faces greatly speeds up that entire process. Also, this is useful for the damage boost you get from attacking a sleeping monster, because you can only have two active barrel bombs placed at one time. However, you can throw a third one while in the air, to detonate all three at once for an extra alarming monster wake up. Next, if you're in the Buddy Plaza section of town, if you head around to the other side of this tree and then climb up it, you will find a Kohoot nest. You can search this to get some freebie items. This takes two to three hunts to fully restock, so periodically check back in to get more stolen owl goods. Next, you can get some really easy extra monster parts by using the wyvern riding mechanic. Anytime you jump onto a monster, don't just slam them into a nearby wall. Take the time to run them over to any other monster on the map instead. You can also be grabbing some of those perma buffers along the way. Then attack a nearby monster two times, which will break off parts from them, and then launch your monster straight into the other one. Colliding with that launch will let you instantly ride the other monster, so you can then repeat the process of breaking off parts from the one you were just on. Doing this will net you a giant pile of extra monster parts. Also, while you're wyvern riding, you can hold backwards while doing attacks, which does different moves, and some of those attacks come out quicker than the basic ones. Next, wall running better. You might see yourself prematurely flipping off of walls, which means you're not holding down the sprint button. If you hold that down while you're in a wall run, it'll consume stamina, but you travel a much greater distance vertically, or you can shift your momentum to run on it horizontally. Next, you might want to bring along a few honey with you, because you can convert those free first aid med potions you get from the starting blue chest into first aid med plus. Those heal for a lot more than the standard ones, meaning you'll likely only need to chug one during battle instead of multiples. Next, at the end of a quest, it'll play out one of a few of these victory animations, which are often adorable, but take up some time if you really just want to rush to get to the quest completion screen. Instead, if you dangle yourself in the air when the timer runs out, it'll completely skip those animations, getting you to the quest rewards in a quarter of the time. Next, if you need to sharpen your weapon during combat, don't just stand still doing it, because you have a doggo on your side. Call over your palamute, get on him, and safely sharpen while on the move. Next, always try to have either demon drug and armor skin potions, or mega demon drug and mega armor skin potion effects active at all times. You can't stack the regular and mega versions, but after consuming just the mega demon drug and the mega armor skin potions, my damage and defense went from 213 387 to 220 412. Pretty easy stat boost, so make use of those. Next, one of the first things you want to do in town is to make an item loadout with your preferred consumables. By simply clicking on one of your saved item loadouts, it will not only restock all your favorite items, but it will also auto-deposit all that excess stuff you have on you. Next, if you're trying to capture a monster and need to easily know if they're in their capturable state, just look at their icon on the minimap, and if it's flashing a blue monster face icon on them, that's when it's time. Then just plop down a trap, tranquilize them twice, and you got them. Your captured monster parts will then show up in the quest completion screen. 
You can also check your hunter's notes to figure out if it's better to capture or kill a monster so that you can carve them, depending on which monster part you're after. And last for this section, I recommend going into the camera settings and changing the camera distance to anything above 50. This will increase your field of view and will make it much easier to keep even the taller monsters fully in frame when you're fighting them. But if you prefer only seeing full screen monster thighs during a fight, keep it set to zero. There are tons of armor and decoration skills that will be useful depending on which weapon you pick, but here are some of my favorite all around all purpose skills that you should maybe seek out. First, one of my personal must-haves for Rise is a Vade Extender 3. This greatly increases the distance of your dodge. Since many of the monster's attacks don't have a strong homing effect to them, just physically getting out of the way of where the attack was initially aimed is the best way to often avoid damage. If you happen to be more used to Souls-like bosses that can 180 mid-animation to still get you, think the opposite of that here in Monster Hunter, just get out of the way. Also, an added bonus of a Vade Extender is that it also lengthens the distance you travel in the air after a wire dash, letting you traverse the map even quicker if you find a good elevated position. Next, I also recommend Part Breaker, which makes it easier to break things off of monsters, yielding more monster parts at the end of the hunt. If you pair a severing weapon with Part Breaker, plus Weakness Exploit which increases critical hit chance when hitting those parts, and Critical Boost which increases crit hit damage, you can easily lop off most monster tails in just a few well placed strikes. I like using traps to line up those tails and chop them right off when they pop free. Next, if you want to try to stay up in combat and be chugging health potions less, or are just learning the game, consider level 3 of Recovery Speed. This quadruples the health regen rate of the red portion of your health bar after you get hit with an attack. If you can avoid getting hit again for just a few seconds, this lets you quickly and freely recuperate some of that health you just lost. This is especially useful for mitigating periodic light to medium damage you might be taking. And last for the armor and skills section, let's make you a ton of money very quickly by using the rank 3 of the geologist skill which allows you to yield much more for mining nodes. Then when you have that on, you want to keep an eye out for an expedition location that has an upsurge of mining outcrops. You can make the most money in the last region, but here I'm going to do this one in the forest. There is a set amount of time the mining upsurge lasts, so you need to be fairly quick about this. So go into your detailed map and set it to highlight nearby resource nodes for you, and you're looking out for the two rock symbols with the question marks on them. Then farm as many mining nodes as you can, reaping extra resources every whack thanks to the area's upsurge and that geologist skill you have on you. Then back in town, if you don't need them for crafting, you can sell off those big stockpiles of rocks you just got for a big payout as any. Now a really easy way to get Geologist level 3 instantly is to go up to the Courier in town, add on content, and then accept the new Guild Cross armor set. This set will give you rank 3 of Geologist and give you a whopping 121 defense, which is massive if you grab this right at the start of the game. Or you can just wear it as a cosmetic layered armor if you like how it looks. the most important decision you'll make in your entire life, picking a Monster Hunter weapon. Here's an ultra quick summary of all 14 for you. The hammer, charge up attacks while on the move, bash monsters right in the face to stun them, and then wail away with strong blunt damage. Hammer, a hit and run brute playstyle. The sword and shield, play right up close and personal with a healthy mix of quick strikes, blocks, and effective evasion. You can also use items without having to sheathe your weapon. Sword and Shield, a jack of all trades warrior playstyle. The Light Bowgun, fire quick barrages of different ammo types, inflict status ailments, and socket explosives into the ground or straight onto the monster to then detonate. Light Bowgun, a trapper playstyle. The Hunting Horn, attack in three different primary ways which add different color notes to a music bar. Use those to apply various buffs to yourself or teammates and deal some impressive DPS while doing so. Hunting Horn, a stat-boosting damage dealer playstyle. The Longsword, 
You slash fairly quickly with incredible reach, build up a gauge that increases your damage, and counter incoming attacks with big ol' flashy animations. Longsword, a hard-hitting samurai playstyle. The Lance. Focus on blocking attacks instead of dodging them, master a more unique movement system, and getting quick pokes of damage in between absorbing oncoming attacks. Lance, a damage dealing tank playstyle. The Bow. Fire straightforward or widespread arrows from mid range, apply different coatings to make them inflict status ailments, and carefully maintain your stamina for charging up attacks while dodging. Bow, an evasive archer playstyle. The Switch Axe. Wield a massive long reaching axe which can be powered up to the alternate mode of this weapon, a strong two handed elemental sword. Switch Axe, a two in one purely offensive playstyle. The Great Sword. Move around pretty slowly but hit like a truck, and carefully time when to charge up for those bigger strikes. Great Sword, an all or nothing damage spiker playstyle. The Insect Glaive. Deal quick multi-hit strikes while using a flying kinsect to attract bonuses from the monster which enhance your overall moveset. Insect Glaive, a DPS focused playstyle that uses more verticality. The Heavy Bow Gun. Hang back at mid to long range, fire a variety of bullet types, inflict status ailments, and utilize a super powered mode that lets you either rain a barrage of bullets or blast a pinpointed snipe. Heavy Bow Gun, a pure shooter playstyle. The Gun Lance. Have a massive defensive shield like the Lance, lose some of its mobility options, but gain the power to shell monsters from close to medium range for even quicker bursts of DPS. Gun Lance, an explosive tank playstyle with a little extra range. The Dual Blades, quickly zip around the battlefield and become a flurry of slashes. Also, carefully utilize your stamina to power the blades with even more damage. Dual Blades, a dual wielding assassin playstyle. The Charge Blade, wield the sword and shield that can charge up vials, which greatly boosts the outgoing damage of the weapon's alternate form, a heavy long reaching axe. Charge Blade, a systematic playstyle that balances high damage and solid defense. And that was all 14 of the weapons, but if you want a more in-depth look at each of them, check out the video in the top right that better pinpoints which type fits your playstyle best. There's five types of Palico classes, each having two specialized abilities each, that the other types can't get. The healer type has the ability Herbaceous Healing, which plops down a vitality plant that can be hit to detonate a healing effect, and it can sprout multiple times. The healer also gets Health Horn, which does a big heal for the entire party. Then there's also the Fight type, which comes with Rousing Roar, which applies a critical chance boost for the entire party, indicated by a red glow around each person. The fight type also has the ability Furious, which sends the Palico into a frenzy, increasing its base stats, indicated by the red icon above them when it's active. Then you have the Assist type, which comes with Feline Silkbind, which will tether the monster into place, drastically decreasing the range in which it can move. The Assist type's other ability is Poison Prison, which is a standard trap they can lay, however, this one will inflict poison. Then there's the Gathering type, which comes with the Endemic Life Barrage, which loads up a random creature which inflicts various status ailments. The Gathering type also has the Pilfer ability, which will throw out a blade that will rip extra parts from the monster, which is reflected in the quest reward screen. Then there's also the Bombardier, which comes with the Feline Wyvern Blast, which throws out a large bullet which can then detonate multiple times when struck. The Bombardier also has the Giga Barrel Bombay, which is a large bomb the Palico pulls out and then runs it itself straight into the target. And that's the basics of the Palico classes, but your Pala Mutes can also be equipped with different items that function like abilities as well. Most of these are different attacks or scrolls which apply buffs or heals. Now for some buddy tips. First, I recommend switching your Palico's behavior type to large first, which will put their priority on the main monster. Otherwise, you'll catch your Palicos wandering way out of battle to go attack some random smaller creature. You're also not limited to having just one Palico and one Palamute either. You can choose to have two puppers out with you at all times, or two catters if that's something you'd prefer. 
If you're trying to solo the Rampage quests, I recommend taking two Palicos in, because you don't really need the traversal boost from having a Palamute, since these are pretty small arenas. Also, since you're battling a lot of different monsters all at once, I find the persistent buffs from the fight type and the passive heals from the healer type to be the best ones to take into those Rampage quests. Next, consider equipping your Palico and Palamute with weapons that inflict the opposite damage type of what your weapon primarily inflicts. Say your weapon doesn't cut off parts too well, equip a buddy with a sever weapon to help make up for that, or give them blunt damage if you want even more stuns on the monster. This also applies to status ailments as well. And last for this section, make sure you're keeping an eye on the buddy skill page, because they will be frequently leveling up and gaining access to more of those skills. It's pretty easy when you're first starting out to completely forget to equip those passive effects, which will make your buddies even stronger. Now if that wasn't enough and you want more Palico goodness, check out this video I did which goes more in depth with their skills and abilities. Next is the very, very important perma buffers that Rise added, which are these little different colored birds you will absorb. These will raise either your max health, max stamina, or boost your attack power or defense. These bonuses will only last for one hunt, but they will stay active for the entire thing, even if you faint. Since these can drastically improve your stats and are easy to just snag while you run around, I recommend heading into the game settings and change the HUD map type to detailed map. Then open up the large view map where you can toggle between different things to highlight and change it to perma buffers. Now you can easily see where those stat boosting birds are nearby, which will make it much more convenient to scoop them up even quicker. After switching that map setting, if you still want to see a zoomed out version of the map during gameplay, just hold down the radial menu button. Also, when you come across these little patches of foliage, a lot of the time they are hiding perma buffers that are not indicated on your map. By spending just a few minutes gathering up these little guys, I took my stats from 100 health, 100 stamina, 209 attack, 545 defense, up to 200 health, 170 stamina, 224 attack, 595 defense. Depending on which pedal lace you have equipped will determine the maximum you gain from those perma buffers. Those will be focused either more on health, stamina, attack, defense, or an even spreading of all four. Perma buffers are super easy stat boosts for your hunter, so make sure you're actually using them. Before you head out on any quest, you need to eat a meal, which raises your max HP and stamina, but also provides various buffs depending on which ingredients you choose. Towards the very start of the game, I recommend going with Dango Medic, which will improve your healing when you need to drink a potion. Then Dango Defender, which will sometimes negate oncoming damage. And Dango Trainer, which will help you level up your Palicos and Palamutes a bit faster. There's also always a daily special effect you can check out, which will have bonuses which you won't find from the other items. Later in the game, the importance will switch to using specific meals depending on which monster you're fighting. Here, I saved a build for each elemental resistance type, giving 10 more resistance to that needed incoming damage. Also, you can use a Dango Ticket to pop the activation chance up a bit higher, however, you will always get the health and stamina boost. If you happen to already start a quest and you forgot to eat, well, no big deal. If you head into your tent, you can not only restock consumable items and change your equipment, but you can also eat a meal while you're in there. Tasty. Hey, you made it to the secret bonus section. Nice. Here are a few extra tips for you, or just interesting details to keep an eye out for. First, in your hunter's notes, you can change the default pictures of monsters with your own glorious snapshots. Now remember when we talked about monster thighs earlier? Well, here you go. Next, each map has extra sub camps you can find, so keep an eye out for these little bonfire spots hidden around. After you find one, talk to the merchant in town to get a quest to unlock that sub camp, then you'll be able to quickly fast travel to it from there on out. Next, in the forest, if you go all the way up the large temple, you will find a crumbling wall on the west side of it. 
If you use a bomb on that spot, it'll blow apart, revealing a hidden area with a collectible and some extra materials. Next, if you issue the wait command on the action bar, your Palico and Palamute will then anticipate your incoming affection. Each has multiple unique animations you can mess around with. Next, in the training area, if you look all the way up, you'll see an opening to an area you can actually get to. Once you traverse up there, you'll find a hidden mural depicting, I don't know, monster stuff? But you can also just practice your moveset or just chill up there. Next, in the lava caverns, you will spot echo bats looming all around, which will turn red in a frenzy when a monster is nearby. These will attach to the monster and detonate when another monster hits them. You can also run monsters through these on purpose, and then launch them into another monster to blow them up for a little extra damage. And very last, keep an eye out for a notification that a lucky life has been found nearby. You can use your map to spot their icon, which is either an owl, which will increase your payout of Zenny at the end of the hunt, or a crow, which will increase your points gain, which is the blue currency you use back in town. And that concludes everything I had for you in this video, but if you want even more, I made a new playlist consisting entirely of all of my Monster Hunter content. Also, if you plan on picking up the big Sunbreak expansion for Rise this summer, consider sticking around on the channel, because I will definitely be digging into that as well. There's also going to be new Monster Thighs, so that's for you. As always, I'm Alex, you've been watching Boomstick Gaming, and thanks for checking this out. Hey, you made it this far into the video, you actually have a good attention span. What? I appreciate that. Click on all the stuff. All of it. Just click on all of it.